Hello friends, this is the Photoshop Workbench. I'm Mark Johnson. Thanks for being here. In today's tutorial, we'll blend three flypaper textures with a photo to give it a painterly appearance. But we won't stop there. We'll also impart a soft, glowing look to the edges to give the impression of runny wet colors, similar to what you might see in a watercolor painting. Finally, we'll refine the tones and colors non-destructively using the original raw file data that is cleverly tucked away in a smart object. Thanks to Dale Nichols for submitting today's photo. Alright, so we are going to end up with something similar to what you see right here and we're going to begin with this image from Dale that you see right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this image into Adobe Camera Raw. Now I am beginning in ACR because I want to bring this through into Photoshop as a smart object layer which basically means that I can double click on the thumbnail for that smart object layer and reopen this file in Adobe Camera Raw where I can work on it with all of these wonderful ACR tools and also work on it in a completely non-destructive fashion. So the first thing I want to do here in Camera Raw is just go up and click right here on the Straighten tool. And now I'm going to drag right along what should be a straight horizon, but is currently a little bit off kilter. So I'm going to drag right along that. You can see it is going to straighten this as soon as I click on another tool. And I'll just click right here on the Hand tool. It has now straightened the horizon for me in one quick step. Now, on this particular scene, I'm not exactly sure what tones I want because I'm going to be blending in textures. That's one of the advantages of bringing this through as a smart object layer. Um, I can easily tweak these tones after the fact. So all I'm really going to do right now is just click Auto here and set it to its auto settings. So I have a fairly bright sky because that's going to really allow the textures to show through. In fact, when you're blending textures, it's always a great idea to have a very recognizable subject. In this case, the subject are these trees and they're in silhouette. And then if that subject is surrounded by a lot of negative space or kind of open area without much detail, then the textures will really show up in those areas. I'll also tweak the clarity just a touch here to bring out a little bit more detail in the edges. And then before I open this, I'm just going to check my workflow settings. I want to make sure I'm working in 16 bits so I can be aggressive on my tone and color correction. Definitely want to open this in Photoshop as a smart object. And for now, since I know I'm going to be working with a lot of sRGB textures, I'm going to go ahead and set this to sRGB. By the way, if you want to learn about this sort of stuff here, which is uh, representing color management. Um, I have a link in the introduction to this workbench to my free color management video tutorial series. I recorded it years ago, uh, but the information in it is still incredibly useful to understanding not color correction, but color management, which basically means getting colors from your screen to your output device, whether it's a printer or whatever, um, in a uh, fashion <laughs> that matches so that you can uh, actually predict how the colors are going to look on that, that output device. So go ahead and click OK here and let's go ahead and open this object and again that's happening because this is checked right here. So I'll open the object, come here into Photoshop, it's a fairly large file and I'm going to start layering in textures. Now first thing I want you to pick up from this tutorial is that um, you can layer in as many textures as you want to get the look you want. And in this case, I just started playing around with this image from Dale and I ended up layering in three textures. You might layer one, two, three, or more, and you'll probably play around a lot with the blending modes and things like that. I do have other tutorials on texture blending, so uh, feel free to just keyword search texture and you will find other tutorials with other information beyond what I'll cover today. Now I'm going to go down and grab a texture. This is a flypaper texture. Uh, it is from the August Painterly. I believe it's, yeah, I think it's the August Painterly um, uh, pack on the flypaper site. In my introductory text, I have a link um, and a 
discount code for 15% off fly paper textures as well as a link um, and a discount for French Kiss Collections textures. So all of those are going to be great textures to work with. Or of course you can photograph your own. So I'm just going to do here a select all which is Command or Control A and then a copy which is Command or Control C and then we'll come right in here and I'm going to do a paste which is going to be Command or Control V. Now I need to scale this a little bit because we're working on a really high res picture even though flypaper textures are very high resolution the photo is a little bit bigger so I'm going to go to edit free transform and I'm going to go ahead and hold option on the Mac alt on the PC and I'm going to grab this and you can see that's sliding both sides of this simultaneously still holding option or alt now I'm going to go drag this and that's going to take the top and bottom handles and spread them out now I'll tap return or enter and I want to see how this looks blended with the photo below. So I want to cycle through these blend modes and the fastest way to do that is to activate the move tool and then hold shift and tap plus. And as I do this you will see different blends occurring. I like multiply. That's a really good start. Kind of gives this a um, sort of a sepia look. But I'll go through the other ones here. You're going to find that the ones that are most commonly used and I, I, re I really recommend that you try them all but the ones I most often use are multiply which I liked best here overlay which does not look good here at all soft light which also doesn't look good and hard light these are the ones I use most often I'm gonna go with multiply for this texture now there I could certainly reduce its opacity if I wanted to I could even drain the color out of it um, you know I'm gonna add a link to the introductory text that will take you to a whole series of um, great texture tutorials that will also help you out so I add a couple couple other links there alright now I'm gonna go get another texture and let's go to this one here this is Canaletto, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to go fast here, so I'm going to do select all, which is Command or Control A. I'm going to do copy, which is Command or Control C. And I'm going to come over here and do a paste, Command or Control V. And there it is. And once again, I'm going to free transform it. This time I'll use Command or Control T to do that. So just repeating the same process. I'll hold Option, Alt on PC, and drag this out, and then drag this out no problem scaling textures a little bit. If you have to scale them a ton you might start to see some issues but really not going to be a big deal because they're really just presenting um, you know subtle texture in your photo. Now I could use the move tool and shift plus and cycle down through these but for the sake of time I'm just going to pop right into the one I know I'm going to like here because I've tried this out. I'm going to go to multiply and I like the way the uh, kind of what do you call that? Teal tones of this are blending with the brown tones. It's getting a little dark, but I like the way those tones are coming together. I like the look of this texture in here. So a lot of things are starting to look nice to my eyes. I'm going to go get another texture and let's see if we can use another texture and use it to add more texture and also brighten this up. Let's just take a look. We're going to go to this Arcadia texture that we have right here. And I'm going to Command A or Control A. I won't say Control anymore. <laughs> I'm going to Command C. I'm going to minimize this and then Command V and then Command T and then drag these out while I'm holding Option or Alt. Tap Return or Enter. And this time, again, I did this through experimentation, I discovered I like Overlay Mode. Overlay Mode does a couple things here. It brings in this texture and it also brightens the scene. So at this point, we have a lot of textures in there. Zoom it up nice and big. A lot of textures in there. You can see the way the texture is there. You can see how it interacts with the trees down here. Um, really like the texture. That's looking good to my eyes. Uh, this scene does need a little bit more love. Um, and what I decided as I was working on this scene is I wanted to see what would happen if I kind of took this in the same direction but veered off a little bit and played around with a kind of a soft glow effect in combination with the textures. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose image duplicate here and we're going to work on a separate file just so we can compare these two. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. 
meant to do that. There we go. All right. So if we're going to take this in another direction, we're going to give it a little bit of a soft glow look. Then in order to accomplish a soft glow look, which is going to give those sort of wet, run, runny um, edge colors, uh, what we're going to do is duplicate this layer, almost like stacking two slides on a light table, uh, two identical slides. And that's going to darken the scene. Um, then we're going to blur one of the slides. <laughs> but if we know we're going to get darkened a lot, what I'm going to do is actually brighten this scene um, unnaturally so that when it gets darkened in a moment, it's going to come back to where I want it. So I'm going to double click right here on this thumbnail. It's going to reopen ACR right where I left off. And all I need to do here is brighten the exposure. Now I'm going to keep a look or an eye on my histogram there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drag the saturation down to minus 100 so I can really see this. I don't want to blow out my highlights, but I want them to kick right up next to the edge there. And I can double click this to reset it. So I want very bright values, but not blown out values. And if I hold Option or Alt and click here, you can see I've got blue there, which means those values are hanging by a thread, but I don't have white, which means they'd be gone. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up, or not open this up, but say OK, and have it update this smart object. So it made things a little bit brighter. Now, I'm going to duplicate this, but I don't want to just use Command or Control J. I want to duplicate it by Control or right clicking on this layer and choosing New Smart Object via Copy. Now this is clever, because what this does is it makes a new layer that is its own smart object layer referencing back to ACR, but it's independent from this layer. If I did this with a command or control J, if I made changes to either one of these smart objects in ACR, they would both be affected simultaneously. I want to affect them independently. So I'm going to do a new smart object via copy, and I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now that's going to build density in here. Um, now what I want to do is blur this layer. So I'm going to choose filter. Actually, let's zoom this up so we can really see our edges. You want to look at this at 25, 50, or 100% magnification. So I'm going to choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I can play around here. Let me actually zoom this even tighter. Let's go to 50%. I can play around here and get. notice how it looks like we're starting to get a little bit of a, um, a leak to the color in the edges there. That's kind of a cool look. You get to decide how much leak you want. I'm going to go back. So you see how you're getting that, that soft look and those sort of glowing edges right there? I really love that. So I'll go with this. Let's see. I'm just going to play around a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go with something kind of like that and press OK. So we now have a soft glow, which looks pretty cool. But I'm a little concerned that this is too bright a little concerned that these blacks are a little too dark. So I can work with these existing smart object layers and fix all this up. So I'm going to go to the bottom one, double click it, and I felt like it was a little too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and knock back. I can either knock back my whites or my exposure here. Let's knock back the whites a little bit. And I want to open up the shadows a whole bunch. And now I'll press OK. And so that should darken this down and it should brighten these up. Let's see. Yes. It did that. Now, I still want these to be a little brighter, so I'm going to go to this layer, double click it. This is the blurred one, and I want to open up its shadows as well. And I'll press OK. See how you can just play around with this? Just experiment until you get the exact look you want. Ah, OK, this is looking better. Definitely looking better at this point. And let's look at those edges right there. OK. All right, I like the way it's coming together. Um, let me go back into this bottom layer. And let's see what happens if we add a little bit of blue. I'm just going to slide the temperature slider over a little bit. Press OK. And I just want to see what happens if we go a little bluer on this scene. There's before, there's after. I like a little bit more blue in it because it kind of has a end of fall, moving into winter look to it. So that works for me. Um, now we could continue tweaking inside these 
two smart objects. Or if you just want to work really fast from this point forward to do your final refinements, you can come up to the top layer here and we can just add a few quick adjustment layers. So I'll go into the adjustments panel, which you'll find listed alphabetically here under window. And let's just add a levels adjustment. And I want to push this highlight value in and make things brighter. But you can see that as I do that, this gets way too bright. So what I want to do is paint it away from there. So I'm working on the mask. I click on the brush. Got a nice soft brush right here. 100% opacity and flow. I want to swap my colors. So you can get your default colors here. You can swap them here. Or you can press D for default and X to exchange. And now I want to paint with a big soft brush right over this area. because I kind of want to knock that back to where it was don't want it to be that bright. All right, good. Now what I want to do is add a hue saturation adjustment layer and pop the colors out a little bit here. So I'll go to adjustments, click here on hue saturation, and I'm going to see what happens if I pop all colors at the same time. And by the way, you could get to a grayscale look here too to see if you like that. That's sort of a almost grayscale, and then here is <laughs> way technicolor way too saturated but here's a little bit more color in there and I like that I like accentuating that color just looking in at my textures I'm gonna go back to this layer here I'm gonna knock back the whites a little bit more it just seemed too bright to me I'm gonna push the contrast a little bit just see what happens you can always press Command or Control Z and undo to get what you want. And you can also go to this layer here. Actually, let's go to this one here and just see what happens if I play around a little bit with clarity. Let's push that higher and see the look. I'm going to show you that up close. There's a moment ago, which is more of soft, glowing, ethereal, and then this that clarity brought a little sharpness into it. You get to decide which you like. But hopefully you can see, with everything we've done here, that there is a world of creative potential. So um, here is the uh, original image with the textures overlaid in various blending modes, overlay, multiply, multiply. And then here is the soft glow version that has the sort of runny edges or blurred out glowy edges. <laughs> so if you like giving your images a painterly look, um, you may also enjoy watching my Impressions of Topaz impression tutorial. I have a link to that tutorial in my introduction. I also have a 15% discount on Topaz products in my introduction. So check out that tutorial, see if impression excites you as, as much as it excites me. And um, it can give you, you could take this existing scene into impression and see what happens then, or you can take a scene in there before you ever overlay textures. But so much potential, and uh, I hope that you take the time to allow yourself to play around with all of it. Have a wonderful day. Take care.